Hello, in this lecture we'll study the trigonometry of right triangles. We'll discuss angles and sides of right triangles, including reminding ourselves what the Pythagorean theorem says. We will then define the six baseline common trigonometric functions. We'll evaluate trigonometric functions using right triangles and use such functions to find side lengths in triangles. Now a right triangle is a triangle that contains a 90 degree angle, aka a right angle. So for example, here are some right triangles. That little square in one corner indicates the 90 degree angle. This triangle, however, has no angles marked off as being 90 degrees, so it's not a right triangle. However, we can divide it into two right triangles if we drop a line perpendicular to the base from the top vertex. By drawing the line from the top down to the base to form a right angle, we now have a right triangle on the left, but since a straight line has an angular measure of 180 degrees and we have 90 degrees on the left, we also have 90 degrees on the right, and this blue triangle is also a right triangle. The Pythagorean theorem is a way to relate the lengths of the three sides of any right triangle. So suppose we label the three sides of a right triangle as A, B, and C, where very specifically A and B are the two sides that form the right angle. Then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Because of the Pythagorean theorem, if you know the lengths of two sides of a right triangle, you can always find the length of the third side. I'd also remark that the side across from the right angle, in this case labeled C, is called the hypotenuse. So we have a right triangle with sides labeled ABC, where the hypotenuse is C. Then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let's find the length of the unknown side in each of the following triangles. First, we have a hypotenuse of x with other sides 2 and 5, or a hypotenuse of 8.3 with other sides 7.1 and y. In both cases, we'll simply apply the Pythagorean theorem. First, we would say 5 squared plus 2 squared equals x squared. The single number being squared by itself is the hypotenuse, which in part a is x. 5 squared is 25, 2 squared is 4, their sum is 29, so x is plus or minus root 29, but because we're talking about the length of a side of a triangle, a negative number is not sensible, so we say x is the positive square root of 29. For part b, we say y squared plus 7.1 squared is equal to 8.3 squared. Again, the number by itself is the hypotenuse, which in this case is 8.3, not y. So we can say y squared is the difference of these two squares, which evaluates to 18.48. So y is plus or minus root 18.48, but again, the length y should be positive, so we compute this and estimate it to be positive 4.3. Suppose the only thing you happen to know about a right triangle is that it has an angle of theta, where theta isn't the right angle, it's one of the other ones. On its own, this information does not tell you what the lengths of the triangle are. For example, here's a tiny, tiny triangle with a given angle theta. But if I make it bigger, I don't actually change the angle. So I changed the lengths, but I did not change the angle. And I could make it even bigger still. Now all three of these triangles are right triangles with an acute angle of theta in the left corner. But the ratios of sides are the same between all of these triangles because these triangles are similar. Since the angles have to add up to 180 degrees, I have a 90 degree angle in the corner, I have the same angle theta here, this means this top angle will also be the same between all three triangles. Since they have the same angles, they are similar, meaning certain ratios have not changed. So, if we set this right triangle with angle theta, with side lengths a, b, and c, again using c as the hypotenuse, then a over b, the ratio of those two lengths, or the ratio of a to the hypotenuse c, or the ratio of b to a, which is just one over the ratio of a to b, or the ratio of b to the hypotenuse c, or the ratio of c to the side a, or c to the side b, all of these ratios are determined completely just by the angle theta. If you have a right triangle with angle theta and you label the sides where c is the hypotenuse with the two other legs a and b, all of these numbers, a over b, a over c, and so forth, are already completely determined just by having set what that angle is. We are not claiming that the lengths a, b, and c are fixed, just that the ratios between them are. So suppose you have this triangle labeled as before. We're going to identify each of those ratios with a trigonometric function, commonly just called a trig function. 
So B over C, we will call the sine of theta. A over C, we will call the cosine. And B over A, we will call the tangent. The reciprocals, C over B, are, is called the cosecant. C over A is called the secant, and A over B is called the cotangent. There's some confusion that often happens that the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, whereas the reciprocal of cosine is secant. So here you have sine to cosine, here you have secant to cosecant, but sine is reciprocated to cosecant, and cosine is reciprocated to secant. Tangent is reciprocated to cotangent. Now, rather than label the sides as A, B, and C, we're going to refer to them by how they relate to the angle theta. Specifically, the side across from theta we're going to call the opposite side, the side next to theta we'll call the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse is the hypotenuse. So opposite and adjacent refer to the sides which are not the hypotenuse. One of them is across from theta and one of them is next to it, and the hypotenuse is called the hypotenuse. Then we can check that the sine of theta which in this case was called b over c, is the side across or opposite from theta divided by the hypotenuse c, opposite over hypotenuse. Similarly, the cosine is the adjacent side length divided by the hypotenuse length. The tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. There's a common mnemonic that you may have heard before, so ka toa, where sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so katoa, to remember what ratio forms which trigonometric function. So we've set sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent opposite over adjacent. Given the triangle below, with side lengths 5, 12, and 13, find sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta. So sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, Across from theta, we find 5. The hypotenuse across from the right angle is 13. Opposite over hypotenuse, 5 thirteenths. So the sine of the angle theta is exactly 5 thirteenths. What about the cosine? That would be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 12 over 13. And the tangent would be opposite length of 5 divided by adjacent length of 12. Now remember, these words opposite and adjacent are relative to the angle theta. So here, we've put theta to refer to the angle in the top, and the right angle is at the bottom left. We can still, however, find the sine of theta, the cos of theta, and the tan of theta. So here, we would label the sides opposite theta, adjacent to it, and here is the hypotenuse. So here, we would get that the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, or 7 over 9.22. The cos of theta is 6 over 9.22, and the tan of theta is 7 over 6. We can also use trigonometric functions to solve for lengths in a triangle. Here we have an angle of 35 degrees in a right triangle. Opposite side length 10, adjacent is unknown at A, and the hypotenuse is unknown at C. Consider the sine of 35 degrees and the tangent of 35 degrees. The sine of 35 degrees would be opposite over hypotenuse 10 over C. The tangent of 35 degrees would be 10 over A, or opposite over adjacent. You can solve these for C and A respectively. To get C is 10 over the sine of 35 degrees, and A is 10 over the tangent of 35 degrees. With a calculator, we can get decimal approximations for the sine of 35 degrees and the tan of 35 degrees. Depending on your calculator or computer, Ways of entering numbers will vary, but most commonly there is something in the mode menu, and you want to make sure here you're in degree mode. The other mode for trigonometric functions is called radians mode, which we have not yet introduced, but we will shortly, don't worry. If you're in degree mode and you compute 10 over the sine of 35 degrees, you'll see that C is approximately 17.43 and A is approximately 14.28. Here is a diagram of a triangle. It is not itself a right triangle, but we want to find x. What is labeled, however, is if we draw one of these altitudes from one vertex perpendicular to the other side, that altitude has a length of 82 units. So that line creates two smaller right triangles. On the left, we have a right triangle with an angle of 62 degrees across from the altitude, which had a height of 82. And on the right, we get another right triangle with an angle of 40 degrees across from that same altitude of 82. So we can find the base 
of each of these triangles and add them together. That will give us the length in the original triangle that we were after. We were after this entire length x, which will be this length plus this one. So we'll call the one on the left x1 and we'll call the one on the right x2. Now we can talk about each triangle on its own. Because we know the altitude and we are interested in the other side that isn't the hypotenuse, tangent is the most useful of the trigonometric functions because it does not refer to the hypotenuse. So the tangent of 62 degrees on the triangle on the left is the opposite side length divided by the adjacent side length. And similarly, on the right, the tangent of 40 degrees would be the opposite side length divided by the adjacent one. We can solve these for x1 and x2 respectively. x1 is 82 divided by the tangent of 62 degrees and x2 is 82 divided by the tangent of 40 degrees. Therefore, the x we were after is the sum of the two lengths, which we can approximate to 141.32 units.